Okay, next up is a Bali Matahari. Picked it up. The gentleman who uh, who had it said that he and a friend were working on it one night, and they were blowing a fuse. Somehow they blew a fuse trying to set it to free play in the coin door. I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but um, they decided that for the 5 amp fuse, they just put in a 30 amp fuse, and things have not worked right since. So um, I'm trying to find a good angle on this thing to at least show what the preliminary stuff shows. Okay, this board right here is called the Power Transformer Module, I think. Let me look here. Power Transformer Module. Basically, it is a, a small power supply board. It's got some rectifiers in the back. Angle is probably not too good on this camera with the door the way it is. Got a lot of wiring in the back. And then... Um, there we go. I don't know how well this shows up on the video, but there are the fuses. Looks like we had somebody did some wiring here, uh, kind of what they would call a heck job, I guess. And you can see why I hear burned connections. Probably, I don't know if that's from the higher fuse or what. So um, I got some goo on me here from these um, rectifiers. So I'm going to break out a schematic. They're free on IPDB.org and um, see if I can figure out why. There was another fuse missing. I checked all these for the right ratings. Put all of the correct ratings in. I was able to at least get play field lights on. But uh, I think I'll run across there and look what the voltages are. Alright, so just some initial diagnosis. I threw a shirt behind here. Um, just so I didn't want this thing dancing around and hitting the metal. And I cleaned the connections, they were dirty. That got me back the general illumination play field lighting. Uh, I haven't even hooked them up yet because I wanted to check these bridge rectifiers to see uh, what kind of shape they're in. What should happen uh, with an ohmmeter, you should be able to connect the black lead to the AC side and then um, the red lead to the positive voltage side and you should get um, open resistant but uh, sure enough when I try that on BR3 it's reading a dead short so I'm hoping that's where the blown fuse is from because if I check either of the other two bridge rectifiers on there they're showing open so I've got a bad bridge rectifier there the question will be is there something blowing it down down line from it and uh, there's some troubleshooting we can do all right, got my parts in from Marco Specialties. Uh, I bought a connector rebuild kit for Bally and Stern. Um, it comes with the three connectors that go on the printed circuit board, and then three new Molex connectors of the right sizes, and then a whole bunch of Trifricon pins. So what we're going to do is uh, take these wires out one by one. I've got my handy dandy dental pick. I'll just push the uh, retaining pin in there, pull the wire out, cut off the old one, and then using this uh, Waldum crimper, crimp on new pins, put them in the new connector, and we'll see how it goes. We'll just go wire by wire and transfer them over so we don't get them mixed up. thought I'd try to record uh, actually putting one of these pins on. Uh, the first time, uh, this is the first time I've done this, but it, it's very straightforward. It goes quickly. Um, here's the last connector. It's the big one. Um, the kid gives you a little plug and it needs to go in the seventh one. So you just uh, put the plug in and cut that off later. And then uh, the way I've been doing this is I just cut off the first wire. And then I'm going to strip it. And this is a smaller gauge wire than my crimpers have. so. I'm going to have to do it with the side cutters. Be very careful doing that, that you don't take any wire off with it. So then, you got the wire, that's a little bit long. I'm going to trim it down. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to take a pin. There are two crimps here, one for the wire, one for the insulation. You want to line it up so that the wire crimp is doesn't have any uh, missing wire 
when it's crimped. You want a full crimp on the wire. And then you put it on this B crimp. Crimp it. Check to make sure that one actually that's probably the worst one I've done just because it's just missing a little bit of wire. It's not quite full, but I'm going to call that good enough at least for this time. Then the second crimp is this A crimp. You crimp um, the insulation piece on. Alright, so now you've got your pin and this one is the first one and you put it in with this little slot, this little notch is going to go facing the slot because if you have to remove it you push the a click. To remove it, you just use something small like a dental pick. Push that pin in and you can pull the pin back out. Okay, so here's the board. Uh, I actually replaced two rectifiers um, because I, I ohmed out this one and it was also bad. And then here are all my nice new connectors. They're solid, man. They're on there good and tight. I did not replace the uh, male connectors because they were in good shape. Um, so I just replaced the Molex connectors on the top. I was still having some problems though, and what I figured out is these uh, fuse clips are shot. I'm gonna have to replace all six fuse clips. Um, they're actually loose, and if I wiggle them around, I can get voltages to come and go, and they even buzz a little bit. So I've got three. I'll, I'll hit the three that I think are the worst, which are probably this cooked one here, this one's making noise, and then the main power one. So then, um, after I did all that, I checked the voltages. I actually had all the voltages across the test points. That's great. And I turned it on. Still couldn't get anything except general illumination light. Move the camera here. Um, just kind of pushed in on the chips and then powered it on. And sure enough, this LED started blinking and the machine's working. So I'm making some progress on this Matahari. Um... Displays work. I think for the most part lights work. I've got some burnout bulbs. Having troubles with the coils on the play field. The flipper coils work, the chimes work, and the knocker works. I run through the coil self-test and they all work. And there's a little uh, trick in the user manual for ba uh, ballets that uh, there's this ground braid right over here lower left where my finger is. It goes across the bottom of the back box. If you take an alligator clip and you put one in on that ground, then you can touch the metal um, tab on each solenoid driver. And if, uh, if it's working, you'll see action. So there's a chime. This one doesn't do anything. Knocker, nothing. Chime, chime, chime. Nothing, 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 nothing. You get the idea. So five of the coils work. I don't know if their adventures in overfusing cook the rest or if um, if it's something else. I need to look at schematics to see because uh, I think this test is taking the MPU out of the out of play. It's not worried about the signals coming from the MPU. It's directly firing these transistors and they're not working. So I need to see if I've got a bunch of bad transistors or if the diodes in the coils went out or what. So here is the problem why only the knocker and the chimes were working and nothing else in the playfield. There's a fuse underneath the playfield that handles all the coils on the machine on the playfield. And it was uh, it was blown. And then you can see obviously this fuse clip shot. So I need to uh, replace that. But at least the coils work now. I just put a fuse in there to test and they work, but that's not going to hold up. I need to replace it. So while I was working on the machine on uh, some other stuff, the LED for the MPU is right here. When you turn on the machine, it blinks real briefly, and then it blinks seven times. And uh, that seventh blink is testing 43 volts on the MPU, and it stopped working. I get six blinks just randomly. I, I wasn't like tweaking anything electronically when it went out. So I did some checking and you can I actually was able to see 43 volts in this connection and then I followed the schematic back and I could only see it on one side of this R13. Uh, I could see it on the left but not the right which really had me scratching my head because 
you know, did the circuit have a failure or what? Turns out that resistor was bad. It just went bad. It was didn't look cooked or anything. Um, so I replaced it and got 43 volts into the circuit. Uh, but just kind of weird that out of the blue it failed. I'm going to add a remote battery holder here for this battery. I'll desolder this, take it out, and then I'll... Um, I bought this on Amazon, actually. It's a four-battery uh, holder, and it's it was a lot cheaper, actually, on Amazon than some of the pinball resellers. And then these wires will just go up to the board, and then I'll screw it in place. I'll add a diode, uh, a blocking diode. Apparently, some machines charge the batteries, and the blocking diode uh, prevents any charge from coming back into the batteries. I don't know that I really need it, but it seems like a best practice, so I'll add it in. Okay, so here's the battery in that MPU. All I'm gonna do is desolder it, and then uh, solder in the wires from the battery holder here and here. I thought about putting a Molex connector on here, but it's not that big a battery holder. I think it'll be all right to just hard solder it in. So let's take a look at what we're doing here <clears throat> on this transformer and the and the rectifier board that goes with it. The transformer itself actually on these bellies come out very easily. There are some screws on this big metal bracket that hold it to the side of the cabinet on the inside of the back box. If you take that out, the entire thing comes out. The transformer, the plate, and the rectifier board. So what I'm working on right now is re replacing these fuse clips. And you can see I've gotten two of them done, and I've got four to go. And they're just little brass clips on this particular machine. Just ordered replacement clips from Pinball Resource. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to show how to remove and add new ones. This is what they look like. You see they're very small. They're just the end cap for that fuse, and there are two little pins that uh, that go into the board, and then we solder them back in. So uh, we pull the old ones off, put the new ones in. It's pretty straightforward. And then once I'm done with that, these standoffs were broken off, and the board wouldn't stay on there. And I kind of made a little bit of a mistake. Here you can see the two new rectifiers I put on. There's the old one. Uh, when they first installed these, they had these flush mount um, rectifiers, and they would go up against this metal plate as a giant heat sink. Well, the new ones are bigger, they're higher wattage, and they don't fit in all the way down flush. And so I soldered them in with the thought being when I replace these standoffs, I'll leave a little bit of a gap. But then I read a little bit on the internet and found out that a lot of people just put them in on this side, and it's very straightforward. You just have to make sure you get the right pins, the negative and the positive, in the right holes here, and then AC and the other holes uh, to make sure the rectifier is in. But it's it's pretty straightforward to have that thing in on the top side or on the on the outside. Anyway, that's an overview of what I'm doing. I'll probably do a little quick video showing what this looks like when these are all done, when it's hooked back up to the standoffs. standoffs. Okay, here's the finished unit all back together. It has a guard over the transformer that comes off with a few screws. And then um, I mentioned this plate you saw it earlier. It's held on with screws under the side of the back box. And then here's a lovely rectifier board with all new fuse clips on it. And I had a little faux pas where my screws weren't long enough for those standoff tubes I bought. So I used some one inch playfield posts. So I had a little color to it, I guess, is a way to look at it. A little odd looking, but it works. So uh, everything works on this thing now.